What part of Fukushima do you not understand? When nuclear contamination hits the fan, plutonium is everywhere. It's in the sea, it's in the air, and we don't even have any evacuation plan. Google Fukushima, take a stand. So the two major items, shut the Avo Canyon, and yes. solar, bring Solartopia to Los Angeles. Yes. And we have now some, some great experts, as they say, I'll talk afterwards. And now um, uh, we're gonna proceed with Donna Gilmore. Yeah. Donna is one of the great activists, uh, uh, very responsible uh, for helping to shut uh, San Onofre. And she is now in the process of raising the very serious issues about the decommissioning at San Onofre, uh, about which many of you can actually go out and do things uh, as we also proceed to shutting uh, Diablo Canyon, okay? Thank you. Okay. I'm actually a late blooming activist. I've only been involved in this a few years, uh, but I'm a quick study. And since San Onofre shut down, I've been studying the waste. I don't know how many of you are aware. The NRC made a decision uh, last year that it's we can just leave the waste right where it is, um, basically indefinitely. Um, and they re they recognize that we're not having a permanent repository anytime soon, and it's been impossible to find an, an interim site. Um, what I have learned from uh, listening to NRC technical meetings, where you actually get the truth, is the canisters that the fuel is currently being stored in at all our nuclear plants um, is subject to uh, stress corrosion cracking, and they can fail uh, within 20 to 30 years like through wall cracks and they have no way to repair, and uh, they have no plan uh, to deal with re replacing them. This canister up here, they're planning to use at San Onofre. Uh, that green thing is about a 5 8 inch thick stainless steel, and there's a big concrete mass around it, and Diablo has a big concrete mass around it. What they don't tell you is there's air vents in that, con uh, in that concrete to let the uh, to cool the, the hot fuel in the canister. So that big concrete is not doing you any good. So, so it, it, but it makes a nice way to get the radiation out once that thing cracks all the way through. So that's what we're living with. And at Edison uh, down at San Onofre, they want to spend one point, even though they know this now, they want to spend $1.3 billion to put in another system that's even worse. Um, with, you know, and I'm intervening in the proceeding at the PUC to try and uh, stop them from, from getting that, that money. Uh, go to the next. Okay. Now, at Diablo Canyon, and they're not, I found this out on my own with my research. They, they checked, they don't have any technology to inspect for cracks. It does not exist. Not, not when you have uh, spent nuclear fuel in there. Uh, but they see down at the bottom left, that's a Diablo Canyon can, um, uh, cast. It's got cement around it, and inside that vent hole is the thin canister. And they put a, something in there, and they took the temperature in certain spots, and they scraped it to see if there was any salt on there, because salt is highly corrosive to stainless steel. And they found the perfect conditions to create stress corrosion cracks, to start the cracking process and even Dr. Singh who is the man, the manufacturer of the whole tech canisters he says he, he, these are not really repairable and uh, with even a microscopic crack you will have millions of curies of radiation being released from that one canister let's go to the next one okay uh, the industry will tell you we're not aware of any problems that's probably a true statement because they have been, they have, they can inspect them to see if there are a problem. So I have a handout, a couple of handouts in the back. One of, one of them is, talks to you about the nuclear myths. This is like countering their BS they're giving everybody. So this is very, uh, you know, very excellent one to read. And then this, this is about some better solutions. So hopefully you get the handout. If not, you can go to um, my website and get those. Uh, they do not have any way uh, to monitor that, the, that anything's going to start cracking. We won't know until after it leaks, okay? Um, now, there's a Coburg uh, tank in um, Cape Town, South Africa. It's in the same environment as our West Coast plants, Diablo, Humboldt, San Onofre. We have salt, we have high moisture, we have onshore winds, we have regular fog. 
Um, those, are, those are the perfect conditions to, to trigger the cracking and have the crack go all the way through the container. And that canister failed in 17 years. 17 years is all it took. And it was even thicker than the canisters at Diablo. Um, there's a, an organization called uh, EPRI, a nuclear industry organization, uh, Electric Power Research Institute, and they cherry-pick data in the report that, that PG&E and, and Edison is using to say that it'll be 80 years before anything happens. They excluded this plant uh, from the report. They excluded the variables of onshore winds, surf, fog. I mean, it's just a fraud, okay? Um, and, the, the, uh, and, and the only way you can find cracks, uh, the only way you can really find them is to put some kind of dye inside the container, and that doesn't work with spent fuel canisters. But the nuclear industry is promising uh, in five years, the industry will have it figured out. Don't worry, Donna, you worry too much. Okay. This is an actual quote from Dr. Chris Singh from Holtec. We managed to get him on video saying this. Well, in, in, in my uh, personal belief, it is not, it's not practical to repair a canister if it were damaged. Uh, if it had a through wall, through wall damage, first you prevent it, but in the most unlikely circumstance, if that canister were to develop a leak, uh, let's be realistic, you have to find it, that, that crack where it might be, and then find a means to repair it, you, you will have, in, in, in the face of millions of curies of radioactivity that is coming out of the canister, uh, we think it's not, not yeah. that forward. You can actually uh, hear the manufacturer saying this, and it took a lot of work to make that happen, but uh, it worked. And they have no plan to replace if, if you have a canister that, that, that's cracking and you need to replace it, you have to put it back in the pools of water inside the canister. The NRC allows deconditioned plants to destroy those pools of water, and they have no backup plan for what to do. And Rancho Seco no longer has pools. Humboldt Bay no longer has pools. Okay. Um, and the Edison has tried different types of uh, myths about how they can recover and I've gone through and I'm busting their myths one by one. So they, right now they have no, they have no answer. Um, and let's see. And um, the NRC was going to allow up to a 75% crack in these canisters and say that's okay. And so I've been asking them, well, what's the seismic rating of a crack canister? <laughs> you know. So for some reason they haven't been able to answer that question. I, I've actually um, filed comments on, I've been trying to stop the San Onofre uh, system from getting approved, and so far I've, been, I've, I've filed these comments. Uh, Diane Curran, the one, the attorney that uh, Friends of uh, Mothers for Peace uses, she gave me some tips on how to work this NRC. And so using her advice, I submitted comments and I've been able to, they've actually pulled from approval three canister versions so far. So I've had some success in, in uh, getting, getting delays at, at the federal level. So there's, there's no uh, early warning. The, the, the approved plan, the only way they can um, check for radiation monitoring is an employee walks around with a monitor on a stick every <laughs> quarterly to see if the radiation's coming out. Uh, that's the current requirement and you know PG&E in, in uh, one uh, session I attended said, oh, we, we inspect our dry cast system. And employees check that every day. It, it's just a lie, but most people wouldn't know it's a lie because they don't have the details about that there's no technology to inspect canisters. So, so I've been able to you know, catch them on their lies and what needs to happen is we need the facts to get to the decision makers and that's not happening. So I'm hoping by educating you uh, we can share the truth. Every, everything on my website is backed up with a government or a scientific document, so they, and, I, and I try and use their own data against them. So, uh, you know, I've got hard facts that we can take, whether it's to the governor's office or elected official or whoever, that you can use to, uh, you know, prove that they've been lied to, because that's really what's been going on. And we successfully use this technique to shut down Diablo Canyon. 
I mean, I live in Orange County, and if I can turn these, if I can turn these Republicans, the city council people, uh, to have them say, this isn't what Edison told me, and say, why should I believe you? You've been lying to me. I've been able to turn Republicans on this issue. So if I can do that, I think you know, we should be able to make some progress in, in LA, LA County. Okay, I've, I've, there, I've done research on the market. We're using the thin type at the top. Um, the, the Germans use a thick ductile cast iron, it's almost 20 inches thick. Uh, the French have a, a steel system that's 10 inches thick, it would be better. Um, it won't crack, you can, you can repair them, inspect them, they have early warning. Uh, they have ASME certification is uh, American, American standard, American manufacturing standards. Our canisters don't even meet American standards. The NRC gives them exemptions from the standards. Oh. And Ralph Nader told me American standards are bad. That, those are low standards. And, and, and they can't even meet those, you know. Um, no defense in depth. Uh, the Germans and at Fukushima, they put their, uh, their thick cast in concrete buildings for additional in, environmental protection. So uh, you don't need that big concrete a thing for gamma and neutron protection with the thick cast. They come already built in. These, are, these would be a lot easier to transport. You know, it's all in one. With the thin cast, you have to add, you have to, you have to transfer it between the pool and the dry cast with a, with a, with a transport cast. And if you want to transport the thin one, you have to put it in a thick, a thick trans, steel transportation cast. Then you got to take it to another location that already has another concrete mausoleum built for it. So it's just a lot better. Um, the, the, the problem, why can't we get the thick cast, you're wondering? Is anybody wondering? Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the... Uh, the the NRC will only license something if he, if they have a if, they, if there's somebody that wants it if there's somebody that wants this product like a utility company then the vendor will submit an application for a license to the NRC it takes millions of dollars and it's 18 to 30 months and no vendor will apply for an NRC license unless they have a customer and right now it, we do not have a customer we so I'm I'm trying to force. Edison to be a customer. So if we can get, if we can uh, make this happen in Southern California and change the industry to better technology, I think it, it's, it'll be kind of a seismic shift, pun intended, for the rest of the country, for Diablo, for, for the rest of them. So I'm, I'm, the fight's at San Onofre right now to change to safer technology. You know, maybe we will buy us 100 years, you know. I, I, so far, that's the best. So, um, so I'm running low. Yeah, and yeah, the NRC, uh, they're totally captured by the industry. So they will lower their standards to meet whatever the current vendors offer. And the only thing the NRC is good for is buying some delays and using their information against them. Okay. This is how Germany stores theirs. They put them in buildings, clean. You've seen the pictures of WIP, right, where it's all a bunch of junk stacked together in thin canisters. So the recommendations are basically we need to stop them from buying any more of these canisters. We need to have the, uh, the Public Utility Commission, the California Energy Commission, uh, mandate minimum requirements. If you're going to store waste in California, we're the users, we're paying for them. We should be able to set requirements. Even though the NRC approves the systems, we can have requirements. The Public Utility Commission approves the funds, so I, I, I'm in that battle right now. Um, I, was made, I made some progress uh, with Commissioner Florio and with the judge. I said, these, these canisters are gonna fail in, in possibly 20 years and we're going to have to come up with another 1.3 billion dollars that we don't have to replace them. And and um, Edison objected, and Florio says to Edison, "You mean to tell me it's not PUC jurisdiction if we have to spend another 1.3 billion dollars for this system?" So I mean, I kind of felt I had him on his side, and then I told the the, the judge, 
that Edison didn't even get bids from the thick cast companies. They only got bids from the thin ones. And so we don't even know how much they will cost. And, and you know, they could cost more, they could cost less. And the judge lit up and she said, she says, you mean we might be able to save money if we got more bids? I said, yeah, we might. So, uh, I mean, I seem to hit some buttons with the PUC, okay? Can, you can reach me uh, through my website. You could really use more people uh, involved in this effort. I mean, one canister holds more radiation than all the atomic bombs that have ever been set off in the world. Just one. This is done as a final slide here on the uh, dry casks. And uh, it shows that we really have a short deadline to deal with this stuff. Rancho Seco, of course, is shut. San Onofre is shut. Humboldt Bay is shut. And hopefully Diablo Canyon will soon be shut. How many years before the canisters will probably crack open? You can tell Diane is amazingly hard work. The time to make the break is now to wind and wave and solar power if we're gonna live, nuclear power must be banned. Wrap your mind round Fukushima. It's no time to be a dreamer. Google Fukushima, take a stand. Right.